going to start with some scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 11. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. And later in that same chapter, so we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is, a, is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Psalm 34, 8, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. You might have heard that psychologists have come up with scales of how to measure stress and calculate risks of illness and how to do all the right things to be safe and healthy. But I don't want to enumerate troubles. As the old song says, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Yes, Jesus knows. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus told us, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I do instead want to encourage each one of us to do what the psalmist tells us in Psalm 62. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And the last scripture, Psalm 30, verse 5, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. So no matter what we're going through, Jesus knows, and joy will come. But in the meantime, we trust God and we pour out our hearts to him and continue to do small things with great love. So even at broken times, maybe especially at broken times, and this is my testimony, I feel like the last five years have been a season of a lot of broken times. Even when we're in broken times, broken places, with broken relationships, let's sow seeds of love everywhere we go in every circumstance, situation, and relationship. In one of our recent prayer newsletters, Nancy encouraged us, and I quote, we are to practice sowing seeds and watering seeds continuing to encourage and to pray for one another with full faith the Lord will grow a harvest from the seeds we are planting and watering in the kingdom. And then Paul encouraged us in this month's prayer newsletter, which came out this week, you should have gotten an email on that, let's reach out and love many people, adults and children, during Lilburn days that we will give them a refreshing drink of water, that we will pray for them and that Jesus will refresh them. And that is exactly what God did through this wonderful band of believers yesterday. So raise your hand if you came yesterday to help out at the booth. Look around. We had 23 people. That's more than half the church. Thank you for coming to serve. You all are the servingest. Everyone can play church I've ever experienced. And I'm thankful for every single one of you. So I want to first give a huge shout out to Margie and Barbara, and Teresa, and Teresa's mom, Janet, for the amazing prayer squares. They turned out to be the thing that opened more doors of conversation than anything. You know, with <laughs> especially the children, would you like a prayer square? <laughs> Nobody can say no to that. You know, an adult comes up, can I pray for you? They're like, no, I'm good. Children, would you like a prayer square? It's amazing. And cups of cool water, and it was so cold in the morning, cups of warm coffee. So today, I also want to give a shout-out to Beth and Jim and Mark and Paul for doing such a great job with all the setup and tear-down and um, all that stuff. So I want to tell you some God stories because God did more than we could possibly have imagined. And these are just a few of the stories I experienced. Continue telling these God stories because it really encourages one another. We all have troubles. We all have sorrows. Jesus knows. Let's keep on trusting him. 
So um, we prayed with ladies from something called Intertwined Ministry in Clarkston. They sell handmade candles crafted by refugee women. After praying, they were very surprised that we prayed their mission statement almost word for word without us realizing what it is. And it just felt like God was just giving us a kiss of unity in the body of Christ. It's so beautiful when he does that. We prayed with many police officers throughout the day. Lots of us got to pray with the cops. It was really, really fun. And um, one particularly memorable interaction was with a young Lilburn police officer who was recently married, buying a house, about to buy a house, and, and hoping to have children soon with his wife. So let's continue to pray for him, that God would bless him and his wife. And I'm keeping everybody anonymous because we're probably recording this. Um, and I was personally thrilled to see several friends that we hadn't seen for many years. So one couple is again connected in the body of Christ after many years of struggling to see God as loving. And they had been away from church for many, many years. That kind of tied in with some of the testimonies that have already been shared today. Another couple I saw has um, strayed away from the church for a long time, but they were visibly touched by loving invitations from several of us, along with reassurances that we are all broken and wounded and just trying to be real with one another. Church should be a safe place, and as imperfect as we all are, we try to nurture that kind of environment here. And I'm, I was glad to hear, I think, Beth, you said something along those lines. Come as you are, you'll be loved. And another young friend whom I've known since her parents announced that they were expecting her, and they said, here's her due date. I mean, we've, we go way back. She's now grown up, and she's married. I met her new husband, and I was delighted to discover that they're seeking God and trusting Jesus with everything. And so pray for all those. I mean, we all know people who have walked away from the church, de-churched, who have been hurt by the church, et cetera, et cetera. Let's continue to pray um, that they would be feel like they can take that step and be safe and welcome. Whether they come here, whether they come to go to another fellowship, that they would really walk, step in, in faith, in obedience towards the full and abundant thriving life in true community as God intended. And so we were also encouraged to see three families who live right in our neighborhood, and one of the families are not yet believers as far as we knew, we know. But I was looking for them, and I had this little, well, this little 14-year-old um, ROTC kid helping me. I was like, help me find my neighbor, because <laughs> I can't see her. It was like this place was packed. There were thousands of people everywhere. And so when I spotted her, she and her son came running and ran into my arms. It was just, and I was just like, Lord, pray that they, let's pray that they will run to Jesus that way. It's just so amazing how open people are when we just offer them like a simple thing, like a, a smile or a hug or something like that. We prayed with a precious woman from the organizing committee of the Lowburn Women's Club who had a blood clot in her leg. And we got to pray for healing for her and just let's continue to pray for her. We prayed with a heartbroken, precious man whose adult daughter is in jail awaiting trial for doing something. I'm being cryptic here because of the age of the listeners. For doing something in response to chronic abuse from an individual which resulted in his demise. So pray for this precious father's broken heart and for kingdom transformation and mercy for all involved. And finally, right as I was packing up to leave, I got to pray. we got to pray with two precious young people who were 18 and 17 years old who were staffing one of the booths that was right next to our booth in a health-related business. And after we prayed, the 18-year-old man, young man said that he felt God's power and he knows he needs to be back in church. He had grown up in the church and gotten away from it and... He was just visibly moved. And so there were so many encouraging things like that, just small things done with great love. Many invitations were extended by everyone who was there. Many prayers were lifted up. So, Lord, let's just close in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for all these opportunities that we had to offer cups of cool water, to offer prayer squares, to offer invitations, to offer prayer, to offer encouraging words in the name of Jesus. We just trust you. With the outcome of every single seed sown, we ask that you would bring the increase and that it would be for your glory. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.